inside this video I'll be demonstrating how to replace the switch. This is the on off switch for this generator. This is a petrol generator and I'm going to replace it with this switch over here. Now the problem with this switch is it's come out of its rocker. Uh, it's uh, been damaged and it's very difficult to actually turn this generator on and off. So I'm going to remove this switch and I'm going to replace it with a new switch. Now on this generator I've got four faceplate screws. So I just need to remove them. Now, you don't have to remove the screws. You could just work with the switch from behind, but because I'm doing a video, I want to show it uh, quite clearly. And uh, at the back there, it's not very clear. So I'm just gonna remove the faceplate quickly. And on this unit, it is size eight screws. And I just open it like that to give me access. Right, so there's the switch. So I'm gonna remove the terminals at the back. There we go. And now I want to remove the old switch. Now they've glued it in because it's a generator and generators have a lot of vibration. So I'm just removing the old glue. And there is some here on the back as well. Now I just need to pinch the sides here and let it come through the front. And this is why I took the face off because while you can do this without removing the face plate, it just this extra space is very helpful. So what I'm doing is I'm pinching this and squashing it through. And then I need to pinch it at the bottom as well. So there at the bottom, it also needs to be pinched. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna tap it so that it pops out. There you go. Now there's a slight problem here and that is this switch is bigger than this switch. Now even though uh, I was supplied this switch as the replacement, I'm not going to uh, go and try and find this one, I'm going to use this one. What's most important with the switch is that the current carrying capacity is either the same or higher. Now in this case, this old switch was 15 amps at 220 volts, while this one is 20 amps at 220 volts. So it's fine to go higher. However, if I was trying to replace this switch with this switch, that would be incorrect because this is a lower spec switch. So in this case, it's fine. I'm still gonna use this switch even though it is slightly bigger in size and the current rating is also higher, which is fine. So the old switch, the length is 24 millimeters, while the new switch is slightly longer at 26.7. I just have to ground out almost three millimeters from the aluminum faceplate. The width on the other hand is the same. So at the moment the switch doesn't fit because I need to grind out about three millimeters. So I'm just going to use a file and I'm going to file the hole a bit longer. I can see that I've got a lot of space to work from, so I'm just going to file out the three millimeters now. So I'm gonna return the face plate so it can be held in place while I file it. I keep checking periodically to see if the switch will fit, and already it's the right size. I'm not going to put it in fully yet, because I first have to connect the terminals. Now lastly, it's important to get the orientation correct. For example, over here it says on, off. So this switch was inserted like this. There's the contacts on the top. So now unfortunately this switch, as you can see, it's marked a zero meaning off and a one meaning on. So what's happening here is this scale does not correspond with this scale. So either I would have to blank that off or I can remove the scale from the switch. So in this case, I'm just going to remove the scale from the switch. So that means I'm going to insert it like this, the way the old switch was inserted, but I will just remove the scale from the switch. So I'm gonna press that in like that. And there you can see the new switch. And I'm just going to remove the one and the zero over here on the switch, because I'm going to use the one that's on the face plate because these do not correlate. Right, I have my meter here, and there's the continuity, so that's a short circuit. You can see the zeros and hear that beeping. Now, what happens is, with the generator, there is the contacts for the switch, and notice that the switch is in the on position. So that's where that one was, which I've scratched off. Now, with this generator, when I short these together, I'm actually switching it off. So that means that the switch is off, is actually on, and on is actually off. That is why I had to rub off the zero and the one here because this is actually on for the generator and this is off for the generator. 
off is actually an, a closed circuit and on is actually a open circuit. Right, so if I want to turn this generator on, it is an open circuit, it's depressed there, which is actually on. Because when it is a short circuit, it's actually off. That is how this generator is wired. So there's the continuity, so it's wired backwards. Normally, when the continuity is there and it's going beep, that would mean on. But in this case, that is actually off. So what I'm going to do now is put the switch in there, like that. And that was where the zero was. So this is actually marked as on, but the switch is off, electrically off. But in terms of the generator, it's on, which means it's an open circuit for the generator. Switching it off is actually shorting those wires together at the back. And therefore, that allows the generator to turn off. And I'll even demonstrate it for you. Notice how these are open. Right, so these are disconnected from each other and I'll even start this generator to show you that even though the wires are disconnected Okay, I've just put the choke there and watch this So there's the generators on but look when I short these two together it cuts out the generator So in this case on is off and off is on and that is why I had to wire it like this. Right, so the next step is to connect the terminals. What I'm going to do is, I noticed they were a little bit loose. So what I did is I just squeezed the mouth here a little bit closed on each one so that it's a snug fit. So now I just return this to the switch. Uh, the green one is at the bottom. It doesn't matter which way it goes because it is just on off. And then the yellow is on the top. I could use these ones or these ones because it's the it's a duplicate this is called a double pole double throw switch and now I could put some glue here because of the vibration of the generator so I'm just going to put some cold glue here just to counteract the uh, vibration of the generator right so there is my switch stronger higher current rating on, off, and I'll quickly demonstrate it. It's uh, off, so when I start this generator, you can see it won't start. On, when I start it, there we go. I want to switch it off, off. Thanks for watching, and cheers.